All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us briefly call to mind our sins and entrust ourselves to the mercy of the Lamb of God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, the Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. The responsorial Psalm. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry, and he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Here am I, Lord, 
I come to do your will. Sacrifice or offering you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocausts or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will. O my God is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a, per a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. We have found the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who brings us truth and grace. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, uh, this uh, gospel we just heard indicates to us the idea of divine vocation or calling. And as we think about the manner in which James and John are called, uh, I'm sorry, Andrew and John are called, they are first sent to Jesus by John the Baptist. Somebody else points out Jesus to them. And that is an important reminder to us of how we came to know Christ. Who was it that showed us the way to Jesus? There usually is some person in our life who is either that role model example or somebody who teaches us about the Lord. As we think about then the idea of divine vocation, 
we know that everyone is called by God to be someone and to do something for others with his life and with his unique gifts. Hence, today's readings remind us of our personal and also our corporate call, that is, namely as a church, to become witnesses for the Lamb of God and to lead lives of holiness and purity. We are told that each of us, as a Christian, is personally called to discipleship which demands an ongoing response of commitment. The first reading describes how the Lord called Samuel to his service. The boy Samuel responded to God promptly, as instructed by his master and mentor Eli, saying, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. The Lord God then blessed him in the mission entrusted to him, and Samuel became an illustrious figure in the Old Scriptures, ranking with Moses and David as a man of God. In the responsorial psalm today, we hear the psalmist sing, Behold, I come to do your will, voicing his recognition that his calling, his vocation, called him to obey God's command, that is, to do his will. In the second reading, we listen to St. Paul speaking to us as well, as he reminds the Corinthians that they have a divine call, namely the call to holiness in both body and spirit. He argues that Christians need to keep their bodies pure and their souls holy because in baptism they have become parts of the very body of Christ and temples of the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel, John the Baptist presents two of his disciples, Andrew and John, to Jesus as the Lamb of God. They follow Jesus to his residence, accept his call to come and see They go with him and stay with him the rest of that day. Then Andrew brings his brother Simon back to present him to Jesus, the Christ. Thus today's gospel describes for us the call of the very first apostles, and then how they in turn called others. We can draw several lessons from the witness given to us by Andrew and John this day. Chief among them, is to cultivate opportunities to stay with Jesus. And for us, this occurs in the life of prayer, whether before Mass or during communion or after Mass for a time of thanksgiving, the times that we set aside each day for silence and meditation, the time that we spend in Eucharistic adoration, whether before the tabernacle or before the monstrance during exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. These are all times when we stay with Jesus. Each one of us is called personally by God to stay with Jesus, to follow his way, and to continue his mission in spreading the good news in a manner appropriate to our own vocation in life. For each of us, belief in Jesus develops in stages, which John appears to be describing in his gospel today. First, we respond to testimony given by others, that person in your life who led you to know God or Christ. Then, having seen where Jesus dwells within believers as individuals or as the community as a whole, we then move to a commitment which is based on our own experience of the risen Lord. Meeting the Lord is crucial in this experience. In St. Andrew's case, his conversion reveals his belief in Jesus as the Messiah. He then brings his brother, Peter, to Christ. Jesus then looks at Simon, the brother of Andrew, and gives him a new name, saying, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, or Peter. Uh, Cephas, or Cephas, is the Aramaic word for rock, which in Greek is Petros. This kind of name change has precedence in the Old Testament, and a name change indicates the beginning of a new way of life, a new purpose, a new relationship with God, which is why when we are baptized, it's not just I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, but the name of the person is spoken before the baptism it's begun. Simon's new life in Christ is symbolized by his new name, Peter, 
conferred by the Lord. The evangelist, therefore, sets out for us the challenging pattern of evangelization which we are called to participate in. The first people to be evangelized preached Jesus, in turn, to their relatives, to their friends, and then to strangers. We, too, then, must find and grow in faith through our grace-assisted, lifelong seeking of God's holy will. And as we come to God through Jesus, whom we find in the lives of those who reflect Jesus in how they live their daily lives, or through various ministries in the church that give witness to Jesus' teaching, or through the scriptures we hear proclaimed, and most especially in the sacraments, when we then find the Lord Jesus We strive to be agents of that same witness to others, just as we have received. That is the very call that we are given. That is divine vocation. And each one of us will live it out in unique ways according to the gifts that God has given to us. With John and Andrew, who stayed with Jesus this day, may we also stay with Jesus and continue to grow in our knowledge and love of the Lord so that we might be authentic witnesses as they were. And let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we now make our prayer for our community and for the world. Let us all pray to Christ the Lord, not only for ourselves and our own needs, but for the entire people and those who have asked us for their prayers. For the whole Christian people, let us beseech the abundance of divine goodness, we pray to the Lord. For those who hold public office or will assume public office, Let us call upon the power of the Lord to give them wisdom. We pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who cannot be present at this sacred assembly, let us beseech him who observes all things. We pray to the Lord. For all of us who pray in faith and ask the mercy of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. For ourselves and those close to us who await the Lord's goodness, let us call upon the mercy of Christ the Lord. We pray to the Lord. And for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, let us call upon the judge of all humanity to receive them into the bosom of Abraham. We pray to the Lord. And for whoever this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And may this mingle in you, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. And may the Lord Jesus be in your heart. The body of Christ. Amen. 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 The body of Christ. 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 You have prepared a table before me, and how precious is the chalice 
that quenches my thirst. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. We have a few announcements. We continue our corporal work of mercy for the month of January uh, to clothe the naked through our coll annual collection of new white tube or athletic socks, which we then give to those in need uh, through sharing and caring hands uh, at the end of the month. The receptacle for uh, the uh, socks that you bring in is found in the parish commons just beyond the reception desk. Also, you'll find in the bulletin uh, an order sheet for Heggie's Pizza. Uh, Heggie's Pizza fundraisers uh, are often done, and our youth are doing some funding to help defray the cost of their summer camp called Extreme Faith Camp. If you like frozen pizza and like Heggie's in particular, this is a perfect opportunity for you uh, to stock up while supporting the youth of Sacred Heart. The parish office will be closed on Monday for the Martin Luther uh, King Jr. holiday. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended.